Hey, I'm back with another video about this guitar. Now, if you've been watching the videos, the series, thank you very much for watching, and you're probably sick of hearing what I'm about to say, but for anyone who's new, I kind of have to explain what's going on. I put this guitar together, it's a parts caster, and what I did was I documented pretty much every step along the way, and I put together a playlist of about 30 videos describing sort of each and every step. My video about the 62 reissue trim system that I got, or the vibrato system, I, I was missing the little string tree spacer that goes underneath the string tree. And I don't know if they didn't send it, I don't know if I lost it. I cleaned the carpets in here and everything shortly after I opened that package. So if they did send it and I lost it somewhere in this room, I probably vacuumed it up and it's gone. Regardless, I needed something and I didn't want to buy something and on eBay or Amazon and end up paying, you know, ten dollars for this stupid little spacer. So some ideas I got, you know, you can do plastic. I think in the 50s, late 50s, they did. Um, no, I'm sorry. They started off directly putting the string tree on top of the neck uh, headstock, and I, but I think they were a little taller by design. Then I think in the early 60s they went to the metal spacer. And then after that, um, they went to the plastic spacer. I believe that's right. Don't quote me. But I found this, which is, what is this? It's for uh, creating a looped in with cable. So like uh, metal cabling. I don't know exactly. Yeah, there's a little picture back there. So you would, I guess, crimp this or something like that. I have really no idea. But the brand is ever built. I got it at Home Depot. And this was less than two dollars. I think it was like a dollar twenty-four. And these are aluminum, so I don't know that the material matters that much. I don't think. Well, I don't see any reason why it would. I didn't really want plastic. I don't know. I just didn't want plastic. But the actual uh, screw that goes is supposed to go in there is a little too big for this, so it doesn't actually go through there. But I plan to just take a drill bit, and um, hopefully you have a drill at home if you want to do something like this. Just gonna drill it, get a little bit bigger uh, drill bit size, then we'll go in there and just, it's aluminum so it's gonna be soft and I shouldn't have a problem just making room for that screw. So again, what a good find. Here's the thickness, if you can see that. It's I think a little bit bigger diameter than the official spacers, but it certainly fits underneath the tree and you can't really see it. So I was super excited to find something like this. I thought that I would be looking forever and I would just have to bite the bullet and buy something from eBay or Amazon or Fender, Stumac, whatever. But yeah, I just want to share those few things that I found and we'll see what happens with them and see how they work out. Maybe you can use something like that. Okay, here's an update on this little doodad I got here from Home Depot, this Everbuilt cable connector. So I was able to um, widen the hole in there. It wasn't easy. What I had to do is put some tape around it and then hold it with a pair of needle nose pliers pretty tightly. And you can see it's a little uh, indented, I guess. Not indented, but there's a little scarring on the side. Not bad. And since this, is a, since this is a relic, it shouldn't matter too much. It's not gonna matter to me. The main thing I'm concerned about is the height because it is a little different. And I'll show you a comparison because I do have one on my Jazzmaster that's the right size. But I wanted to show you it next to a, a bass string ferrule uh, because someone mentioned that and I compared I actually have a jazz bass and so I compared them and I'll show you how that compares. So here's my bass and now unfortunately I don't have any of these string ferrules that are not already installed on the guitar. I don't have any ones that are free but you can tell from right here. So as far as uh, height comparison here is the one from Home Depot compared. So I would say it's the exact same height as the the bass string ferrule i don't know i'm calling these ferrules i don't really know ball end i guess maybe you call them i think i don't know what brand these are actually i'm not going to pretend like i do i can't remember who has who does the colored ones but yeah so and then width wise or a diameter wise i would say they're nearly identical as well so there you go that's uh the comparison there a little blurry but yeah and you will notice that the hole is, is definitely big enough on the base string ball end to uh, compensate or to allow for the string tree screw to go in there. So yeah, if you have one of these laying around and 
Um, I'm not changing bass strings anytime soon. I don't really use this bass a lot, but you know, if you have one of those laying around, then by all means, I think it'll work. It'll definitely work as good as this. It's it's nearly identical in size, and you won't have to drill out the hole. So that's just an update on that, and I will show you again a comparison of this to a real um, string tree spacer. Okay, so here I've got my Jazzmaster with its string tree spacer. And in comparison, here is a little cable connector from Home Depot. So you can tell um, that height-wise, it is a bit different. Now, I don't know if this will compare to like the tall version that sometimes is connected to the D and G strings over here on some strats and other guitars. But here's kind of a comparison as far as height. So it's definitely a smaller diameter, but I've already put... Here, I've got the string tree pretty handy right here, so if I put this on top, um, you can't see, and there's the, the relic job on my string tree, by the way, so, you know, you can't, it doesn't stick out on top or anything, you can't really tell it's under there, so it's not that big in diameter, it's not that much bigger, but it is bigger, and uh, it is taller, so... The moment of truth, of course, will be when I try to put it on my guitar and then see if there's any kind of interference with the, the, the strings themselves and, you know, whether it goes back in tune and whatnot. If, whether or not there's enough break angle, too much or too little break angle. And to be honest, I'm not sure how to, to, to definitely determine that other than just, you know, not having a good sustain and having the the tuning not work properly or come back into tune once you're using the vibrato or the trim arm but yeah so that's the comparison of these two the real one versus the one from Home Depot makeshift one guess what I forgot to mention something on the right here is a guitar or electric guitar string ball end and I thought at one time I could use that wow I just lost it there it is so I thought you know in for a brief moment when I first was looking for these that I could use one and then I quickly realized that it was way too small um, not necessarily height wise but in diameter for the screw that it needs to accommodate so here's that screw as I will try to show you that is not going to work so um, even if you could kind of ream that out the wall of it will be very thin and may be useless to try to do that so anyway yeah the, the a regular string ball end for electric guitar strings will not work a bass string ball end or ferrule will work okay I'm gonna install the string tree now uh, in the past video I talked about how I lost the spacer for the string tree I was able to find a substitute at Home Depot and it's made of aluminum so it's lightweight not that it really matters because this is probably negligible as far as weight goes but i want this strap to be really light so it's sort of maybe a selling point for it anyway i've got a drill bit uh, i went with a 16 i had 564 i believe for the pick guard screws but this one i think is a little thinner and i've got my drill bit set um with the tape markings to where it's the same i started to show you with only one hand but Anyway, I put the spacer and the tree on there on the screw to give me the depth of the actual screw that's left that's going into the wood. So this, the place I'm going to put it, I'll take the spacer off and the screw for the moment. The space, the place I'm going to put it is uh, pretty much across from the A string. Ideally, I think it it works better. As far as tension and the ability of the, the strings to go back in the tune when you use the the trim arm i think it works better further back but i want this to be pretty vintage accurate so i'm just going to put it you know as far back towards the edge of this so the back edge of the tree i'm going to put it sort of in line with the back edge of this ferrule and kind of do that that's going to be my compromise okay so i'm just going to basically um put the drill bit in the center there in the hole and mark a spot and drill it okay so i'm going to loosen up the strings a little bit just so they're a little bit more slack that's good 
I hope. Okay. So I think that's about where I want it. But I want to make absolutely sure. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is um, I did this on my Jazzmaster. I uh, loosened the strings up quite a bit and I'm just going to bend it down. Um, try to get them straight down as possible, like so. And then that would be so, my camera cut out before I finished the video on the string tree. You can see that it is assembled now. And so I'll just kind of tell you what I did. At the end of the video where it cut off, I was about to basically drill the hole for the screw. And what I did, I just essentially loosened up the E and B string. Not super loose, not to where they're flopping around or anything or dangling, but essentially where there's just enough tension where I could push it down to the, the headstock itself. And I saw a video where the guy did it with the maybe the strings at tension, or pretty much at tension, and he just put a drill in there and he just drilled it. But to me, there's too much play, you know, I could get the drill going too much in any degree or angle, and I didn't want to do that, so I just pushed it down and I got this tree itself. I didn't use a spacer, I used the tree itself uh, and a drill bit to sort of um, get the exact location. And then I drilled, and you know, you know the rest. So um, that's how I did it. That's how I did it with my Jazzmaster as well, and it turned out pretty good. You can see the placement. I tried to still keep it around the A string, which is sort of vintage and historically correct and accurate. But I wanted it as far as up as far up as I could, so it's um, about as far as you could go and still be sort of parallel with the A string. <laughs> That's all, folks.